Okay, Thursday morning in the kingdom, and it's nasty out here. Yes, I got the me phone inside the whole shack door. Yes, I've already done an hour's worth of work. I had to shovel out the doggy tunnel doors because they were trapped. That's so much snow, but the wind blew it. But not like Saskatchewan or Wyoming. The snow is not hard where it's blowing in. It's still soft and fluffy. Yes, so this morning we woke up to minus 10 Celsius, but feels like minus 19, so I have to wear the Grinch gloves. Yes, and then on the yo-yo scale, plus 14 Fahrenheit, but feels like minus 2. Oh, that's so chilly. All right, so I had to shovel out the whole shack doors. We'll take a risk here. I'm standing in snow. Can we see that last Nesman? I had to shovel the snow away from the door so when the staff shows up sober, she can get out the mini hoe. And how'd you say, do snow removal? Yes, use the hoe for snow. Yes, oh, that rhymes, yes. But also, too, they're forecasting more snow for us today. I call lies. We never have a two-day snowstorm or a three-day snowstorm. We always have a good snowstorm, yes. But this is normal for April. All right. Once I'm done the intro, I'll, I'll zoom in on the pictures. I didn't untangle the flags because it's too windy. It's best they stay tangled up to protect themselves. And then over here, oh, look at the snow. And then where the wind's blowing, like in Wyoming and Saskatchewan, it's bare ground. I already had the Yamaha screw out to pack the dog trails. Yes! So now I can walk the dogs. And I haven't started the wood stove yet because I'll do that when I go in the shop to weld and weld some more. All right, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, I had to do a little shoveling to get the door open, but I'm not going to shovel, shovel, shovel. What's the point? This stuff's going to melt, plus I have a mini hoe and the staff that can handle it. But it just stirred it, drift in good, but the wind blew it. All right, so they got bare ground over there. All right, we'll continue our walkabout. Ooh, that's Australian. And I think it was Crocodile Dundee. Uh, Hogan, Paul Hogan made that phrase famous. Okay, there's the dog bands that drifted in pretty good around their doggy doors, but they're smart. They got out and everything like that, so we make sure. So we'll have to, okay, see, keep shoveling in there to keep them happy. All right, so over here, just look at the snow. Snow everywhere. And we even got the Yamaha out to pack the snow. Just look at that. And the little flag of exercise is enjoying himself. Okay, as you can see, snow everywhere, but the ground is not frozen underneath. The snow is actually melting underneath, and the Yamaha had great fun. But turning up the dirt, when the sun comes out, that snow will melt first. Okay, as you can see, out in the open areas there, the wind blew the snow around pretty good. And look at the flag on the boat there, the Rust-Oleum. It's actually getting some flag time. All right, there he goes. He's kind of tangled up, but oh well. And over here... The snow drifted in pretty good. Look at the one beside the screen toy there. Look at that. Ooh, we'll have to tell the boss we can't work today. Snow drifts everywhere. We can't get to work. All right, even the cats got drifted in. But it's way too warm out here. Oh, well, let's go walk the dogs, have some coffee with some vodka, and then we begin to weld. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom, and I did some welding with the Hobart Handler 100. Yes, I'll walk over here because everybody needs their exercise. So I'm putting the plates on. Okay. As you can see, we don't get fancy. We're not grinding. We're not doing anything. Just cut it, fit it, and get it done. So I'm learning how to do the welds. I haven't done much of the thicker material with the Hobart Handler 100. So I'm learning which uh, angle the gun has to be pointed at and how far the MIG wire has to stick out because it's gasless. So some of these welds turned out pretty good. And I'm very pleased with this because we did it in a series of stitches or whatever. So we ran non-stop. We didn't stop for a beer or anything. And the Hobart Handler performed very well. We're on two for victory. Okay. And then I started off at 20 for wire speed. And then I bumped it up to 30. This thing didn't overheat or act it up or anything like that. Not like that Asian welder where I'd weld for four minutes and then have to wait four minutes for it to cool down. So I'm very pleased with this. And this is that 035 gifted wire and it's uh, gasless. So I'm very pleased with that. So all I'm doing is wire brushing it with the wire brush. Yes, the safety guards and everything like that were on when I used it. And it's turning out very well, okay? I know most people would be using new steel and all that kind of stuff or grinding up this uh, old steel to make it look pretty and getting beautiful welds but this is just a toolbox which is just going to get bump banged and abused up here at the end of the world all right let's go burn some lunch and then we can get more sides on this 
Okay, I got the battery box up on the workbench here and we have to cut out the floor. So we got the magic lines on here. And of course we're going to use the Pro Point 38 Plus by Princess Auto. And we're going to cut out a little divot thing here. A curvature thing to fill in the angle iron on the 46. So over here we were doing good until we pushed the limits. Yes, I pushed the limits. I tried to speed things up on the toolbox. So... I was going along there at 30 on the wire speed i bumped it to 40 and i was doing long welds or whatever like i wasn't pause stopping every two inches or anything and then i popped the breaker but then i kept going a little bit more and now the pro now the hobart handler 100 is sitting outside because it the overheat light came on so that's the joys of living at the end of the world where it's nasty and snowing, you can take your MIG welder when it overheats and put it outside. Kind of like the wife in the bedroom. Okay, late coffee in the kingdom because I had to get the box done. And I brought the Hobart Handler 100 back in the shop and it turned on. The little light wasn't on. This little light right here, which means overheat, okay? Not like the wife. She never had a light that told me she overheated. All right. Okay, so over here, we busted our tushy. We burned the 330 second rod. The Hobart 330 second rod with the Lincoln Buzz Box ACDC welder. We had it set at that temperature and we just gave it. Yeah, we marked the rod where the rods go for the clicky thing because there's no other adjustments. So hopefully when the staff shows up here right away, we can install the box. And then we can put the battery in and then we can start the wiring for the 46 Chevy truck. All right, let's go make a coffee and the staff will be here shortly. Thursday morning in Whoville and it's just after 8 a.m. and I'm getting ready to head to work. As you can see, it kind of stopped snowing, but there's supposed to be more on the way. You can kind of see it in front of my quad slash skidoo shed here, how much snow came down, but it was mostly just blowing around. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in and get to work. 12.30 and I'm just finishing up lunch. As you can see, it is still pretty nasty out there today and it's actually started snowing again. We were supposed to get some more snow, but we did not believe it. And then when I got to the school, it started snowing and the wind picked up. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in and get to work. 4 p.m. and I just made home from work. I only had seven kids this afternoon and there was four this morning. It is still pretty nasty out here. It actually stopped snowing though, but it's still pretty windy. Now I'll head on over to the kingdom. Hopefully I can make it in the driveway. If not, my dad will have to pull me. Just after 4 p.m. and I made to the kingdom was a lot of spinny spinny, but I had no problems getting in. This only has two-wheel drive as well. If I could not get into the kingdom, my dad would come get me. But we also have the Yamaha out, so if I can't get back into Whoville, I can come grab this. 4.30 and I'm going to put the Yamaha away back into the shed in case we need it again. My dad took it out on the North Dog Trail as well and packed it down for himself while I was at work. So let's put the skidoo away and then I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Got the Yamaha put away no problem. Hopefully we don't need it again. Now it's time to head down to the shop and see if my dad's ready. In the shop and now I have to help my dad get the battery box onto the 46 here and then I can take the wood wagon out to the trailer and fill it up with the last bit of wood we have. There's a lot of snow out there so once it clears off we'll have to go get some more wood totes and fill all those up for my dad. Just got the battery box on the 46. Now my dad is putting the bolts and everything onto it. They actually all lined up. We didn't have to fight with them to get them into place. As you can see, there's my finger right in here is where the one bolt is. And then the other one's over there. So once this gets a nice paint job, it'll look really good. Almost 5 p.m. and I just got the wagon filled up. Now I'll haul it back into the shop and see what my dad's up to. It is pretty nasty out here still, so I don't think we're going to be doing anything else back in the shop and my dad just finished bolting on the battery box here as you can see now I'll show you guys the battery nice and sturdy it didn't fall off yet looks pretty fancy as well somehow we were able to get the bolts and the holes to line up perfectly normally it takes us about 20 tries and a million holes but somehow it worked out this time 5 p.m. and I'm officially done in the kingdom. Made sure to grab my dog treats and the list for shopping. Now I'll head on back into Whoville. Hopefully I can make it out of the driveway. They do have the highway plowed and all into Whoville. It's just the driveway here, so hopefully I can get out. If not, more video. Just after 5 p.m. and I made it home from the kingdom, no problem, and I put the quad away. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and do the weather. 
5 30 and this is the temperature we're sitting at today it's negative two degrees celsius which is 28 degrees fahrenheit we even have the fields like on the bottom it's been pretty nasty out there today the sun tried to peek out and it did stop snowing a few times but as you can see the wind's picked up again and it is nasty out now it's time to head inside let the dogs back in make supper and then i have to head back to the school and do a few things and end my day Okay, that worked out rather well, plus the welder running in the shop here gave it a little bit of heat, plus we also got the welder lubed up so it's easier to start next time. When I did this weld here, okay, it was an up hand, and I held it in right close, brought it up, and then I brought this one around, and close as close as you can get. And then we figured a little nick in the frame there from the torch, so we uh, fixed that up or whatever because there was something welded on there at one time, so we smoothed it out to make it look pretty. All right, let's get these tools put away and maybe we're done for the day until the boss comes along. He's such an asshole. Okay, to finish out the day, I got all the bolts never seized up and ready to go for when I find the floor for the toolbox for this side and then we can install it. All right, let's do the walk around over here. Okay, so now we have the 38 maple leaf. It has the battery, everything's in it and hooked up, okay? So now any work we do on it, we can now go over here to this truck. All right. So the 46. So I have to finish uh, tightening or anchoring the cab down. And now with the battery installed on this side over here. Okay. So now I can run my cables to the battery there. Run it up to the master switch and everything like that and install the new starter. So now both of these trucks will be the same. So any work I do on this one. I can now walk over to this one to do it. This uh, shop extension sure is a godsend because last time we did this working on the trucks, we'd have to go outside and look, we'll see what we did and then work on one, change out the trucks and then bring the other one in. All right, let's go see what the flags are up to. Okay, we might be short some video for this day today. We'll try and give the full 20 minutes so everybody gets a good nap. So we'll find something we did on this day or some videos that we have to say, nobody has seen yet or so people have seen we're going to rerun them again i don't know okay let's go well the staff today phoned down to oregon and ordered a complete glass kit for her truck front windshield back windows side windows all the rubbers everything like that she just put it on her credit card money's no object on this pro project but we don't like chrome so that's getting removed we don't like that kind of stuff we're not going to paint over it we got other things so the dash is coming along pretty good here we've been numerous fits in the truck in and out because we want it removable so I can work on everything behind. So I whipped up this piece of aluminum thing here to hold the gauges. The speedometer we bought on Amazon today. So that's the rough measurement. So we got some wires marked and everything. It's coming together good. And then they wanted $48 US for the rubber gasket that goes on the cowl vent. Oh, it's up here. So by the time that's landed at the end of the world, that's like 150 Canadian. So that's like three cases of beer, eh? And beer is 24s, not 12s. Okay, so I think I made my, save some money, made my own gasket, cut some O-rings, made it fit. So over here on the workbench, I need to install the window regulator for the front windshield before we can continue on any more wiring. So I remember these things, 50 bucks on eBay, usable, crank them out and in and out. So never thought nothing of it. Now they're $500 on eBay used. So I think I can sit here on my bar stool and enjoy some beverage and fix at least one of these to make the windshield crank open because we're going to need it when we travel down south with the truck because that's the air conditioning. Now I'm going to go drink some beer. Talk to you later. Well, it's Friday, quitting time. We're not quitting early. We're going to keep, uh, we've been keep working here because we got the wires done. So all the black wires turned out pretty good, tied up nice and good. All of the thing is marked into my standards. When the speedometer arrives, here's the wires for it. And when the turn signal thingy thingy arrives, we've got the wires here. We did have a dimmer switch in stock, so we got that wired in. It turned out pretty good. We put the old style brake light switch in. No, oh, there's my finger because that works better than the new plastic ones. And over here, all the black wires tucked up nice. I don't know if you can see that, but they tucked up nice and all the switches are ready to go. So it's turning out pretty good. We even included the wires up here. I don't know if we can see them, but that's for the marker lights, interior lights, and the windshield wiper because we're going to have to have one of those. 
So tomorrow we're going to run the rods to the front to hold the rod cradle, modify the rod cradle to accept the new rod which is coming because we ordered that too. All right, so I'm going to go drink some beer because I worked hard today playing with colored wires. Talk to you later. Finally, Saturday is over and I can go drink some beer after I walk the dogs. Today was a struggle and I don't know why. I had my cheat sheet and everything from the 46 Chevy that I did in December on how to put the rod cradle together with the V8 outlet for the motor. So that was a nice easy job there. And put the hockey pucks in, everything's going good. And then the new, oh, there's my finger. And then the new rod will bolt on here. But for some reason, they sell you the rods and everything to go on the inside. But we learned the hard way. So I got the rod cradle in and supported. And then I had to fight with the hood. Because for some reason, the hood doesn't fit. They get worn out, beat up, and shook the daylights out of. So it was a struggle to get that done. But we did find some fender pieces. One is straight and one is kind of flat. But oh well, we'll put it in the wood stove in the morning. And we did find the running board brackets. As you can see, the bolts wear out or didn't they booger well to hold it on. So we're going to have to correct that and make it look pretty. But I've had enough today and I'm going to go drink some beer. It doesn't look like we did much, but I'll make up for it in the beer drinking. I'll have lots of empties. All right, we'll talk to you later. Well, we're off to a slow start this morning because I overworked yesterday taking that truck apart to get all these parts. And then I had to go find this box here. This toolbox was on the original welding truck in 1990, which was a 46 Chevy 3-ton, which is exactly like this 45 Chevy 3-ton. Oh, and we put the exhaust stacks on today, so everything has to fit in according to a plan. And then at the last minute, we found some paint from 2019, which was a little thick and dry, but anything that's getting covered... To keep this project on the go, we're splashing the paint on. And the can and the brush and everything's in the wood stove because uh, it's just a mess. But the fuel tank got covered with some red paint so we can, uh, you know, keep going. But the whole idea is we got to get this project going. We ordered paint. We don't know where it is. That's the joys of living at the end of the world. Everything takes forever to get here. Now I'm going to go drink some beer. All right, talk to you later. Well, last night in the bathtub when I was splashing around with my little rubber ducky, I got thinking with this box mounted, how am I going to anchor the deck, the steel deck that I got for the truck? So I had to take the box off this morning and put a spacer in here so the rod will go down to anchor it. But we're having a good day and we're charging up the battery. I don't know if we can see it in here. But we're cranking the motor over every hour to get some oil pressure because we don't know anything about this motor. It's been in storage here in the kingdom for about 15 years. Okay, I walked around to the other side of the truck and the fuel tank is on and it looks a little wide. It looks like Dolly Parton in a push-up bra or something. But uh, I will assure everybody I've done this before because I did this in 1990 with my 46 Chevy welding truck. We have that steel deck that comes over and the deck will come over and over and it'll line up pretty nice. But it just looks a little funny with the cab and no fenders and such. But we're okay. With a fuel tank mounted, I had to drill all those holes. Yes, that's a lot of holes I drilled. And I was able to get the brake line. So I nicked it right here. I don't know if we can see that, but that's a little nick. So I had to splice in or make a joiner, which is good because, you know, the brake line was too long. The gas gauge is all hooked up with the ground going to the ground. Oh, there's over here. But that's the way I do it because I put those gas gauges in all my vehicles so I know when I'm about to start walking. All right, I'm going to go drink some beer and relax because today was a good day. Talk to you later. All right, it was a good day. We got the gas tank wired in and we made little notes. The gas gauge is wired in. That's a ball check valve, so we have expansion. It bleeds off. We have tie strap troubles, brand new tie straps. Every second one works. The other, these don't grab or anything. I'm even smart enough when I changed this thing over from a diesel tank to a gas tank, I took the little chain off that holds the gas cap so you don't lose it. Because having that chain hang down in the gas tank banging around, that could mean kaboom, like in that C.W. McCall song, uh, Convoy, where the duck, rubber duck goes bye-bye. All right, and then we got some recycled steel. In 2003, we went up to Winter Road and found a ramp for a skidoo trailer. 
I mean, it's been sitting here since 2003. I wrote about it in my winter road books. And the guy never come by with a case of beer to pick it up. So it's mine now. So all you do is just buff it off, make it look pretty, and we can build some seats. Or the seats, uh, bases for the truck. And as you can see, we're going to have to get some upholstery work done on the seat from the IH truck we wrecked on Sunday. And then over here, the reason why we get to quit early today, it's not because the boss is an asshole and I am self-employed, is we finally ran out of MIG gas. So I've been welding for the last month with argon because I'm out of the mix gas and we're using wire that's been in the shop and has a surface rust on it for like for two years. So the odds are against me, but I've made it work. So now we're switching both of these machines over to wire or gasless welding. This is a brand spanking new machine. It's 22 years old and has never burned enough uh, wire or whatever because it was set up for aluminum, but it never had the knurled roller to push the aluminum wire. So it never worked. So now we're going to switch that over to the 035 wire and the MIG welder I've had for 22 years that's still going strong, it'll get the 045 wire. So we're going to try gasless because we can't afford it in the new world we live in. All right, I'm going to go drink some beer. Talk to you later. Okay, it's still nasty out here. The wind is bad. The staff was nice enough to shovel a little trail here, but we're not walking over to see how the flags are doing. It's nasty. Hopefully it snows some more and then we can have a full three day snowstorm. Put that on the time card. Look at the flags go. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video and call it a day. All right, talk to you later.